I'm running with? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the April meeting for the Valoxa Lowndes County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that have never been here, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern, give us the request and the information that we need to start with. Once they have presented their position or the position of their applicant, I will then ask if there are any questions from the board to staff. If there's no questions or discussions, then I will ask if there are any persons here that would like to speak on behalf of the request. If you are here and you would like to speak on behalf, please come to the lectern. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like us to take on your advisement. Once we have heard from that, there will probably be questions and or discussions. I will then ask if there are any additional people in support. If there are multiple people in support, we would like for them to give us whatever information they would like us to take on advisement. But please, if that point has already been brought to us, don't bring it to us again in the interest of time. I will then ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if any persons are here that have questions about what is being asked for and we will deal with that. Once we have heard from both sides, we will generally render a decision here today. However, it is in the bylaws if we feel like parties need to communicate or if we feel like we're missing information, we can postpone or table action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. If you have not signed in, please sign in on the back table so we know who is here for our records. First case we'll call is Lowndes County Case VAR 2015-04, Webb Road Baseball, Baseball Field, Webb Road Hay Highway. Marmella, you have the show. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. First case before you today is a variance request um, the Web Road baseball field. This is a request. First of all, I did pass in front of you an amended recommendation. Just want to make sure that everyone received that from a small slip of paper. There. And I'll explain that um, as we get to it. Um, but the request basically is a variance to the minimum setback requirements for an outdoor recreation. As you can see, the property is zoned EA, a state agriculture, and that zoning, while that zoning will allow for an outdoor recreation facility, um, the use comes with some supplemental standards, and those standards address things such as setbacks, lighting, hours of operation, etc. In this case, we have um, where the property owner has constructed a baseball facility. Um, basically, in their letter, um, they say the use will be for just his private, own personal use. Um, but we as staff had to look at this as the primary use of the property and call it an outdoor recreation facility because we're not really sure the intensity that this facility is going to bring, whether it's going to, you know, do anything more than just, you know, your own place to shoot, hit balls. But in this case, because it's an outdoor recreation facility, the setback requirements are greater than our normal EA zoning setbacks. In this case, we require any structures to be at least 100 feet from the property line. And as you can see on your site plan there, the structures are about 30, 30 feet from the property line. Take this closer. According to the application, um, the structure are, are about that from the property line. So they're requesting the variance to our setback requirements. Staff looked at this, we had a lot of debate um, amongst ourselves regarding the recommendation, and it ultimately ended in a recommend, recommendation of a 6-1 to vote. 
um, with some conditions. And the recommendation was for approval with two conditions. The first condition being that no stadium type lighting shall be allowed on the property. And the second condition was that there should be a landscape buffer constructed along a portion of the eastern property line. That's the portion along that's parallel to the road. The buffer should begin near the bathroom area and extend northwest along the property line to the end of the outfield. The buffer should be at least 10 feet wide and be planted with eagle if I'm saying that right, which is a type of, um, it grows very thick, it grows tall, it's kind of like it just intertwines, you know, with, with uh, one another. Um, the brakes in the buffer for, for pedestrian or vehicular access are allowed. Other standards that are not explicitly stated with this condition shall apply, um, along with the general landscaping standards the county has in place. And what we've done, we just posted, you know, some pictures to show you the build itself and the structures that are in violation of the setback. So again, the recommendation came down from staff as a 6-1 to vote. Um, the uh, opposing vote was from the zoning office um, of, of denial, but it was a 6-1 vote in, a, in approval of the variance request. Any questions or discussions from the board at this time? I have a question. Had the owner built a residence there, would the setbacks be less restrictive? There was some debate about that. Um, if, if there was a residence there, then the field could be looked at as an accessory use and would just be subject to the accessory use standards. Um, in that case, the setbacks would be only 30, 30 feet from the property line. And that's something we did talk about um, with the property owner's representative. They're just not, at this time, ready to construct a residence. They will one day, but you know, that's sometime in the future. Okay. If this is going to be used for the owner only, why is it necessary to have brakes for pedestrian and vehicle use going through this um, buffer? That's a good question. Because the use, you know, in this state now is considered the primary use of property, and we're going to review it as a commercial use. And one of the standards for commercial use is that parking has to be paid, there has to be a a pedestrian way to get from the parking lot to the field. Um, there can't be rocks, it has to be something of a hard surface. So there is going to be paved parking? They the will field. be required to have paved parking. They're in the process, as I mentioned in the staff report, of asking for relief to that as well. Will they come back before us? They won't come before you all. They go to the county manager's office. Do you know how many parking spaces they'll have to have? They were required to have about 215, 250 parking spaces, and that's based on the size of the baseball field. But they are asking for relief to have a substantial less amount. But you don't know what number? I've heard anywhere from two to five parking. But I'm there here, and they can probably answer that better than I can. Okay. Um, if they were 100 feet from the street, would we be hearing anything? No. Okay. Um, they wouldn't have to do any buffering or nothing because they would just be far away. They would. They would have. No, they would have to do any buffering. No matter what. Okay. And the 100 foot is from the center or right of way, not from the edge or. It's from the property line. Yeah. From the property line. Because okay. they, they've got it drawn in here on the map that measures from the center. Okay, we want to make sure that was clear. And I believe that fence, the design professional is here, he probably asked us that in our hand. The fence is not on the property line. Um, I believe the fence is probably in, inside the property sign. Okay. All right. Any other questions or discussions for staff? I have another question. Um, what will happen to this baseball field when the crews don't own it anymore? I mean, you know, 20 or 
40 years from now? What's going to happen in this baseball field? Well, if, baseball field up? If, if it's operational as a baseball field, it will be that, a baseball field, public mm -hmm. baseball field, if the next owner, you know, so chooses to allow that, because the zoning does allow for it. And if the variance is granted, it goes with, with the property and any subsequent owner. Any other questions or discussions? But if it becomes public, and y'all have recommended um, no stadium lights, then they would have to come back for that. That's correct. Even if it went public down the road yes. 20 years from now. Because that condition will go with the property. Oh. Just so I'm clear, if they had built a house or put a mobile home on the site or anything that qualified as a residence, is there anything here that's part of this baseball field that would push it over and, and move it from being, I guess, accessory to being considered commercial? It would be hard to prove, but, you know, a determination would have to be made. If there are more games out here than there is a residence, right. you know, a call would have to be made. We, and we will step, you know, really easy with that call because they may travel a lot, you know, and make this part of their vacation home. Well, where is that line? Where is that? When do you cross that line? But if this is truly used for family and friends, I guess what I'm asking here is, does everything there qualify as, except, could it be qualified as accessory, and does it meet the setbacks under accessory structures? I do believe it accessory will meet the setbacks for accessory structure because okay. there only have to be, in this case, 70, about 70 feet from the center line, and they, they need that, according to the site plan. <clears throat> that, that was a good question. If they put a mobile home there, they would be good. Um, so I just have one um, thing about the plants. Uh, yes. I don't want any invasive plant, no iliagnus, no ligustrum, no nothing. I would suggest wax myrtle. Um, and wax myrtle is a, a native Georgia plant, and the great thing about it is when you trim the hedge, it's a mosquito repellent. And so when you trim that hedge, then there wouldn't be any mosquitoes by the of wax myrtle. Was that the pleasure of the board? Any any type of plant species you all feel necessary? That was just something we knew of that's very it's, big. It's, it's on the list of things don't plant in Georgia. Yeah. I would not want anything <laughs> on this invasive list. This is the Georgia list for what we're not supposed to plant. Um, you could pick any of the native hollies. They grow thick. Then nobody wants to cut through them either. Um, there's native rhododendrons that are evergreen. And there's a lot of other choices. Um, so I would pick a native plant, and I would recommend wax Any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? Okay. Let's talk about liability. Now, is this considered private or public? I just want to get an understanding of this whole process. According to the property owner, this is, will be a private baseball field. Any other questions, discussion? <clears throat> Thank you, Carmel. I have actually have one more question. Sure. Um, the engineer on this is Global Engineering? Yes, I believe. And I'll just guess that they're going to come and I'll ask them more questions. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here in the family that's doing this who would like to address the board? I'm not with the family. Which I was actually. Uh, Jeff Lovell, Lovell Engineering, 3998 uh, Enterprise Road. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of information to add that Carmela didn't. It, every, the questions that I've heard, the answers would be speculation. I mean, Lord knows, I hope the Drews do have a lot more children in, in 40 years they're playing out there on that field. Um, but um, I don't think they'll have a problem playing wax murders. I think uh, it was their intent to build a house there. Uh, Stephen 
was traded during this process, I think, and I think that that kind of put things up in the wind. If his house was there, it wouldn't be before you right now. Um, he's aware that he could put a mobile home out there right now, and this would go away. He doesn't want to do that. That's not that's not how they want this thing to work. And they want it to be above board. Uh, I'll answer any other questions if I can. To your to your knowledge, are they planning on sponsoring one or more teams and having all games out there from outside not the area coming in? Not to my knowledge. You know, the rumor mill's full of stuff, but not to my knowledge. Nothing, nothing that they've disclosed to us would lead me to believe that. So the best of your knowledge, this is purely their personal recreation. recreation. It's my understanding that the intent of this deal was to be Stephen's home personal training area in the pure analysis. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, my question is, when if you're the engineer, you designed this. No, the field was really kind of a, a design build. Keith was here. He builds fields all over the southeast, and um, the groups that hired him to do it because you know when they started the process, the house was going to be there. So this was wasn't some big design that they needed an engineer for. What we did for them was give them a land disturbance permit because they were disturbing more than they. Right. Right. Well, so that that's my question. I mean, you're, you're a knowledgeable engineer around town. You know what all the rules are. Right. Uh, you, you know that if there's not a house on the property, that the setback would be 100 feet rather than 30 feet. A lot of those things were underway when we got involved. By the time they called right. too. Yeah. Um, so, but you pulled the land disturbance permit. We designed a land disturbance, a resident control plan land disturbance permit. We didn't pull it, but we did tonight. Okay, thinking that there would be a house there because the land disturbance permit would No, when, when, when we got involved, we were called, said we need a land disturbance permit for this project. We designed a land disturbance permit for that project. We weren't looking at building structures. We didn't design the septic tank, but th th that was it. We didn't set, we didn't set where the, we didn't do a site plan. We did an erosion control plan to control erosion from the site. That was the scope of our work. Yes. yes, there are. There are. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm concerned. You may not be the right person to ask, and I'm probably not going to get an answer since the owner isn't here, but I'm going to toss them out there anyway. Do you know where the house is supposed to be located? Yeah. Does the stadium build or not? Do you know, Keith? I've, I've not been told where that's going to be. Approximately. Is it going to be up by the road? No. no okay. It won't. All right. I've got two questions that are not going to get an answer, but I'm going to throw them out there. Why was the decision to build on the front corner of 200 acres? I, I don't know. Now, I didn't think that house was going to be on the front. It's going to be way back if I was a veteran person. But why would you put this right on the farthest corner from where you're going to be traveling every day? The we, neighbors are going to see it, but you're not going to see it. I don't we, know. We don't. The other question is, there is a wonderful pine tree buffer starting at the southeast corner. It stops before you get to this baseball park. It would have been wonderful to continue it on and then build your park. I'm just curious why it didn't continue. I don't know. I wish I could answer this. That's all I'm Any other questions or discussions from the board? Is there anyone else here from that pro side of this pro uh, project that would like to give us additional information? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request, or is there anyone here that has questions about what is being requested? Please give us your name and address at the lectern, please. My name is Steve Gaylor. My address is 8182 Old Valdosta Road. My home is exactly across from the entrance to this property. Now, for the past 13 months, I've endured complete disregard 
for the neighborly facet of building things. I have not met Mr. Drew, nor none of his representatives have come across the street to say hello. We're going to be driving on your lawn, tearing up your lawn, and everything else that's gone on with this. Now, the other questions that I have are, you know, the historic tradition of the area. You know, my church, Salem Methodist Church, around the corner. We won't even change the doors in that church because we want it to remain the same. Now, I don't know, I, I know they're a pillar of the community of Hay High River and all of that, but it's not personal until, you know, things are just not done correctly. And it seems to me that, you know, there's whispers of a private membership club here. I originally heard it was going to be for the children of Hay High River. Um, I do have concerns about the traffic, as my yard has already been torn up for 13 months, and not one representative from why the family. They, excuse me, why have they been on your property? Because every time they go to make the turn into their gate, they have to swing into my yard, or every truck has to line up and park in the front of my house at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. for deliveries, logging, uh, concrete, Deliveries are, and stuff. Are they, on, are they on your property or are they on the state right or local right? They're away? on the state right of way to be taken. If they're on the right of way, sir, there's nothing anybody can say about it. If they're on the right of way, there's nothing can be done. If they are across the line on your property, then you have a grievance and that would be something you would bring back to the Lowndes County Enforcement people. But as long as they're on that road, as long as they're on the right of way, even though it's 7 a.m. in the morning and it'd aggravate me if they were out there making a bunch of noise, I understand that, but I'm, I'm not aware of any rules that would prevent them starting work at 7 a.m. that I'm aware of. Are there, is there anything out there, Carmelo, that you're aware of? problems then you need to bring it to the county commission or the county manager to discuss with them the issues that you're talking about. Right. As far as them having it for the kids of Hay Hira, if they are not doing it for profit, if they are doing it as a community service, I don't know that there are any rules or regulations on that. Is there anything you are aware of, Carmella? No, and again, you know, baseball field is allowed in that zoning district as a matter of right. Be it private, public, you know, we don't get into those specifics. As long as they can be standards. I understand your grievances, but I don't think there's, I don't know that there's anything much this board can do. Okay, well. It's, it's beyond the scope of this board as far as what you've said so far. Okay. The, um, the lighting, it is of a commercial type. May it not be installed yet or not, I haven't been able to identify that. But that is going to be shining directly from that outfield back towards my house and two other houses. Okay? The way it's set up and looks. I didn't notice any Those lighting. large poles right there are going to be the lighting. If not, that's the home run fence. Hang, hang on, hang on. Is that, I'm going I'm to deviate for just a minute. Are those poles for netting? If you'll notice, the netting's been put up. Those are backstop netting. They don't use fence anymore. That's, that's what I was thinking. It's all netting. There's no lights uh, on there. Well, and, and we have on our recommendations here that no stadium-type lighting shall be allowed on the property. Okay. Um, this big, yucky Yahweh thing that's on the fence or whatever that you can see clearly from, you know, all about Austin Road, Red Road, that's definitely unsightly. I, I, I assume that it's going to be covered with this landscaping buffer. That sounds okay, but there needs to be different levels of this landscaping buffer installed. Well, Not just this big and, and no. let's wait for 10 years for it to grow up. Well, the county has code and they will have to build it to code. There is some leeway into what this board 
can specify, and we will take that into consideration amongst ourselves before we make a decision, I'm sure. Okay, and the other issue I might have is the traffic. If it is obviously maybe going to be done for residential, I won't have a lot of traffic turning and coming in and out, and the noise created with this. If it becomes a problem, then that would be a situation you would need to go to the county manager or the county commission. Is, is that not pretty much correct? If they're in violation of the county's noise ordinance, then yes, it becomes an enforcement issue. But those times are slightly, you know, quiet times from 10 p.m. to, I believe, 7 a.m. I have a question, though, about the traffic. When, when the county commission um, it makes a zoning change and allows something to come in, they often do the traffic study to decide that a turn lane is necessary. If this were to become a commercial use, would that sort of traffic study, because right now without a home there, it's not really an accessory structure, even though we're sort of expecting that that will happen. Um, if it were used in some more public way, would the county engineer order a traffic study? Not really, unless it becomes a problem. But that would be another avenue that this gentleman could, could pursue. He yes. could ask the county engineer for of the county commission to, to do a traffic study. To look at it. I guess the, the thing that's really unanswered is, I guess I don't know if this big signage and lettering and everything of this name is going to be visible from the road and everything. It is unsightly. And um, you know, other than that, I mean, I just want to make sure everything was done correctly. You know, I've heard that the permits were not applied for or they were gotten late after the fact. <coughs> you know, again, these are rumors. I don't have anything to substantiate what I've heard. But, you know, these are things that, you know, I just want to make sure that we're not just bending over backwards because of a name. Because I am from South Florida, moved up here four years ago, and I have dealt with many professional athletes. And I do not particularly care for some of the attitudes that they take upon themselves. Now this is where I go back to the disregard of nobody coming over to my house and saying, Sir, hello, how you doing? Just human nature. Well, that is okay. that's something that this board cannot control. We can't make anybody do it. I just hear the voice, everything that I have been watching and dealing with for 13 months of the construction process. And this is about the slowest construction I've seen on the baseball field in my life. Well, I cannot answer that. We are trying to make the project fit the rules as best as possible. Without and it doesn't, I mean, and it doesn't matter that this is Drew or Sam Nobody. They would still go through the same thing. I would like to feel like we would look at it in the same light we see a lot of variances every month mm -hmm. where people accidentally step over a boundary or mismeasure I mean, to, to say that they are running over it intentionally and then asking forgiveness later so far I, I have not seen a lot of that to make me believe that's what happened but it could did you at any time, when they wrote around on this, call and report to the powers that be, the county, did you ever call to find out what was being built, if there was a permit? Again, the, the rumors and everything seemed to be suffice that it wasn't going to be right up on the road like it is. Everything that I've complained about was the opposite. You know, there, there was going to be... Uh, it wasn't going to be on the corner. Now everybody's asking, why does it have to be so close to the fence? Again, that was your question, Ms. Um, why not somewhere else on the property and stuff for the buffer there? And how long are we going to need to wait for this buffer to grow, or is there going to be grown mature trees put in salt? So I guess your answer is no, you didn't do it. No, absolutely not. No, I, I heard all the right things again, you know, and I took it for granted that. Um, Hey, this is South Georgia. 
you know, we're not, you know, we're supposed to have a little bit more courteous and human, than, you know, regard. So, you know, like I said, there's not one of his representatives ever come over there to say boo, or this is what's going on, to put anybody's rumors to rest. Yeah. So now yes. I'm just coming in at the eighth hour and, you know, trying to figure out the rest of the way of what's going on. I understand and I sympathize, but that's something that we can't undo. Okay. I've said my piece and, you know, I just wanted to be known that, uh, you know, I do oppose this situation unless there are some deep sanctions and, and agreements taken forth on this property. All right. As far as the lighting and everything. That is one of the recommendations that's on the table. Okay, and the buffer and the landscaping. That is on the table as part of the recommendations from staff. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else here in opposition to this request or have a question about what's being done? Good afternoon. Burke Sherwood, 502 North Ashley Street. I'm here representing uh, Kilgore Farms and some other uh, landowners in the area. I have a few questions at first. Colonel, I believe you said that right now, with recommendation is for 200 plus parking spaces. Yes, they would be required. They would be required to, which, of course, I have a problem with because that lends itself to this being converted to a public use, uh, which is going to go against everything that we've talked about today. Um, we've heard that there's going to be a house built someday. Um, there's no definite time. No one knows where it's going to be. Um, no further plans about that, but we built this nice, very nice, Baseball park for kids playing. Um, I think something that Jeff alluded to, but I'm not sure if everyone picked up on it, Jeff. I'm not speaking for you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I assume the reason you were brought in to do a land disturbance permit after the fact is because they'd already started to work. Is that right? That, that, that's in the staff. Right. So they started to work without having the permits first. This is my concern. We have a pattern of doing things the way we want to do it, and then government has to forgive us. The septic system. I have now sent two uh, open record requests to the county for all permits related to this product. I have gotten my records, but the only permit that I've seen is a permit for land disturbance that was done in June of 2014. I haven't seen well and septic permits. Do we know anything about the septic tank? Did you request that from the Department of Health? Is that the issue? That that, that's the issue that? Okay. I, I'll find out. Do you know anything? Do we know anything about the septic tank? Is it a normal residential septic tank? This is not the floor. This floor is the floor. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, man. Has the board, does the board have any information as to the capacity of the septic tank they put in for this restroom? That is up to the health department, not this board. Okay. It's substantially larger than you would want for just your children. The health department, when, when they are called in on any kind of project, the health department determines what the use is and how much flow they might have to deal with, and they will then specify what they have to put in for a safety tank. Okay. Do y'all know what would happen if they just decide not to build the house and decide they want to make this public and commercial and build more all parts in the area? That's the future. We don't have that in Could they get that car now on 200 acres with the current zoning? If they decided to build, they could build But they have to be 100 feet from the road. And that's my, my concern is that all of this around it is agricultural. And so what's going to happen is then we're going to wind up being in lawsuits regarding the cows that are next door, the smell, or the pigs, or the whatever the farm's going on. Um, as I said, our main concern is the fact that permits weren't issued in advance. We've obviously, um, I guess, been denied since we're at the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for this variance request. And we have this project about 30 feet from the edge of the right of way, um, right up on the corner of the road, right up close to some other houses and then some other farms that are around. And, um, if we continue to just say, okay, but just don't put this there, don't put that there, it's not going to stop. We all know that it's not going to stop. Well, 
Well, we would ask point in, in answer to that, and this is my personal opinion, not necessarily the board. Yes, they just put in one baseball team, and they didn't quite do it correctly, apparently. And now they're asking for forgiveness. If for some reason in the future they decided they were going to build two or three more fields out there, a soccer field or something else, then they are now on point that they've got to go to the county commission, they've got to go to zoning and planning and all that to talk about all this if they are not going to meet all setbacks up front correctly. And if they were to do that and not follow the rules the second time and come in and say, oh, excuse us, we've got all this brick and mortar up and we want forgiveness, personally, I would say, hey, call the board. Well, and our concern is, and I'll leave, I'll leave it with this, is that we allow this to go now, this non-conforming use of this variance. There's never a house built. We've already established a pattern. This should be in compliance with it as the land sits today, which should put it off of that road. That, that's, that's our request. Thank you. I understand. Any questions or discussions on that issue? Is there anyone else here in opposition or have questions about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office, Carmelo? Yes, we did receive a number of calls. Um, some were inquiries, some were support, some were in op majority was in opposition. Okay, and just to make it totally clear, if they met all setbacks, the ball field could be put in there without any request other than by other than getting the permit. That is correct. The exam will allow it. With or without a house. Right. Right. Carmel, I have one question. Sure. Does Mr. Trey live here? Does he have a residence here? I'm not sure. I, well if there's no house on the property and nowhere to go to sleep at night, how do you use a baseball field for your personal use? He's got an answer. Okay. Please, please come to the lecture. I'm Keith Kendrick. I'm the one who constructed the field for him. The, the field was etched out before we started, I guess, from whatever, whoever. But from day one, this field was an off-season training for him. I mean, and, and for him, his family, his kids, and all that. And that's all we've been told from day one. So as far as anything else is going to happen, and why it's there, I can't answer that question either. But, but okay. that's it, an it is, it is built to major league specifications. It is not little league. It's not softball. It is a major league size field. And um, it is, um, again, his off season, which he wanted to use it this year, but he could not because they wasn't ready for it. And they're just, of course, getting started this week. The baseball, so that's really pretty awesome. Has he mentioned to you when he plans to start his house? No, uh, he has not. Did he tell you why he chose that location on 200 acres? No, he did not. No. But like I said, when we came in there, we were, we were contracted just to do the field, part of it, and then the dugouts came. You know, all the place in there. But, but as far as the field itself, it, it, again, it's, it's not for kids. It's too big. It's, it's not a kid's field. It, it's a full size field. One quick question or answer? I, just, I, just, I, don't, I don't want this to, to go unsaid. By right, if zone DA, he can slide that field 70 feet and build it with lights and speakers and anything else that is allowed in the supplemental conditions without any landscape buffering. So I see this as an opportunity if there are concerns about future that, you know, maybe it's a restriction is there's no more fields on the property. Maybe it's that there's no loudspeakers. Anything that's a concern can be mitigated now. Otherwise, with this zoning he's got, he can still build this field and he can have lights and he can have 270 parking spaces with paid parking. So, yes, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to really 
protect adjacent landowners and leave the field as it is. Yes, sir. And that's well within the powers of this board. Okay. What? Okay. I, I'm sorry, Very fast, sir. I'm just going to try to sit there. My name's John Reed. Lakewood Farms, I'm the manager of Lakewood Farms. We own everything north of Stephen Drew. I have nothing against Stephen Drew. And I sitting here today, I hear points both ways. Ms. Hobby asked the question if this gentleman had called in and asked, you know, if any permits going on. I drive by there every day, right out there. I'm assuming that everything, the process is taking place as everybody else does. You don't think what's going on in the area, you just, you just go on with it. So I had that concern, and when it goes through, the only question I have right now that probably hasn't been answered, and I see kind of where this is all going. If y'all turn this down, what's going to happen and what takes place at that point is my question. Okay. If the board, if the board votes against the variance, mm -hmm. basically there are two things that can happen. One, he can go and file a request to the superior court saying that the board erred in their decision and he could take it through the court system and try to keep it. Or he could say, okay, we got a problem, we tear it all down, we move it 100 feet from the property line and we rebuild it. And that's pretty much the two choices that he's got, I think, isn't it, Carmelo? Or is there a third choice I've missed? Those are options, yes. He can appeal the decision. He can appeal the decision or he can move it. Relocate it. No. If, if this board does not grant some kind of variance with whatever stipulations the board feels appropriate. And that feel, that's why, I, that's the wrong word. That status of this board, we can per, put pretty much any kind of restrictions on it. And once it's in there, unless he takes it to court and says we erred in our decision or in our deliberations, then that's what he's got to live with or he's got to move. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I had one. One quick, go ahead. If, if the variance is denied and they go back and build a house or put a residence on there and the variance has been denied, can they come back? Do they even have to come back before us or does it, is it then accepted? What, what happens once and if a residence is built or put on the property? Then everything is in compliance. Okay, so there is a third option. He, if he builds some or puts some kind of residence on it, then everything we're talking about is basically for naught. He's fine. As it stands. Yeah, that's fair. With the exception, he, he may but, go get some permits. But, well, and just so I understand, the, the, the ball fields, because, that well, the, the structures around the ball field, because they are structures and they have to be permitted, mm -hmm. they have to be inspected by the building authority. They cannot be used and they cannot be occupied for the purpose in which they were designed until they are given a certificate of occupancy, correct? I don't know, the building officials okay. here, I don't know if a CO will be required for a restroom. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But a permit will be required. What I'm asking, is there a way to stop them from using the facility at at all until and unless some something is done is changed about this or do you see what I'm saying? I do that would be code enforcement sir. Okay. But as it stands now a stop the work order has been issued to the property so they can't use it until they've gone through this process. Right. And depending on the outcome of the board will determine which direction they are going to go. But we have since you know, the, the stop work order, we, they've submitted in plans for the review. They're just sitting on my desk, depending okay. on the outcome of the board. Sometimes on cases, there's a time limit that gets applied that says you can have this variance, um, but you have to do your project within three years. Otherwise, your variance expires. 
when you last on No. That normally comes with conditional use permits, I believe. You can do that, but just enforce well, I'm it. I'm just trying to enforce thinking, that. you know, they, if they had a house on the property, they had a mobile home on the property, they would be within their rights as they are. But because they don't have a home, they're out of compliance. Right. So, you know, we have chicken and egg. He built his baseball field before he built his house, probably cost at least as much as the house. Um, and at this point, there's just so many un unanswered questions, you know. I think staff, we were interested in the intensity. What's, you know, are, are you going to have? Is this going to be a training facility? There's just so many unanswered questions, and they don't know. Nobody, nobody knows um, the intensity of it. Um, it seems to me, at this point, weighing all the factors of what he can do by right and what he cannot do, that the best way to, as far as we're concerned, the best way to protect the integrity of the neighborhood is to approve with certain restrictions. Because if he, like you said, if he tears it down, he builds back 100 feet, he can do exactly what he wants to. Lights, tall lights, loudspeaker. If he throws in a mobile home for a house, then he can do what he wants to do. May I ask one more? I'm sorry, may I ask one more question? Very fast, sir. We've got nearly an hour in this case. I'm holding the sheet on here, and I just want to make sure I'm understanding for my benefit other than this. Standards for outdoor recreational facilities. Whether he's got a house on there or not, this is going to go to standards for recreational facilities. It won't. So, as the primary use. So if you put a house on it, you throw the recreational facility out. So if you have a house on there and want to put an RV park in, that's not considered a recreational facility. No, RV park's not a recreation. Recreation is going to be a ball field, a basketball court, soccer field. But a, a residence throws that, this that completely out. If, if he puts a residence on it and calls the resident the primary use, this becomes a secondary use. So then you go back to what the letter that would come out, because y'all changed the title of the letter. So it went from the variance table of 40102 to this variance. That's what was changed. That is the variance. The table in that This come here, though, was here. 4.01.02 is what was mailed out. And that would be this, this one here. This one. You see where I'm confused? Yeah, I get it. That was like a typographical error. Standards is what was mailed out. Which? We reference when we come in recreations. Mm -hmm. I see where the confusion is. Thank the letter you. that went out to the adjacent property owners referenced a different section rather than the table and I can stand for you and say that was that was a scrivener's error. That was an error. The variance is to those supplemental standards. Well that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, any other questions, discussions before I bring one point of it? It is within the bylaws, if board feels it appropriate to the table or postpone for 30 days until the next regular scheduled meeting to get some of these answers, or we can vote on the variance with whatever conditions may be put on it, or we can vote on the denial of the variance. Okay, I have. Ms. Corman, you have the floor to make a motion. Okay, I, I would like uh, to make a motion to approve the variance with the following conditions. Condition number one, no stadium type lighting shall be allowed on the property. Condition number two, no loudspeakers shall be allowed on the property. Condition number three, there should be a landscape buffer constructed along the portion of the eastern property line that shall not include invasive species. 
but you use natural uh, native species like wax myrtle or um, uh, rhododendron. <laughs> Or if you had to allele in cypress, I mean that's not my top choice, but you know. Um, are you good with that? You know where I'm going? No. What do you want? We just don't have that list. I mean, you don't have that list. Okay, I'm, I'm saying I want wax myrtle. With wax myrtle, <laughs> I mean, don't like it. It's it grows big from bottom to top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like ten years. Yeah. Well, so Gretchen, let me make sure that I understand the motion. Condition number three, the buffer to consist of wax myrtle? Or to, I, I, the buffer to be constructed of native species, including, including wax myrtle. Okay. You'll like wax myrtle, really you will. It grows a giant bush, and when you trim it down, it keeps the mosquitoes away. Ten feet wide. Ten feet wide. They might have to plant two rows. Citing criteria J. Criteria J is the variance is not a request to permit a use of land or structures which are not permitted by right to the zoning district involved because we are assuming that they will build up. Okay. Do you have the motion? Do we need to clarify the motion, Nene? I'm okay. We clarify. 20 foot buffer or 10 foot buffer? 15. Okay, let's go on the motion. Motion on the floor. Ms. Portman, do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Hobby. All those in favor, please raise a hand and hold the hand up. One, two, three, four. All opposed? The vote is four, one. To grant with those stipulations. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Carmela, I have one question. The parking still has to be decided, right? Yes. That's still something they still have to undergo. The parking. That was that was now staff. Yes. Okay. The next case we'll call is VAR 2015-05, Michael Clark, Jumping Gully Road. Yes, sir, very quickly. The applicant is seeking relief to the county's water system connection requirement. The property is bounded along Madison Highway as well as Jumping Gully Road. Basically, the section of the UOBC talks about subdivide property and the parent parcel is within a thousand feet of the county's public system that you have to connect. I believe I placed a map in you all's packet. This property consists of 200 acres. This portion up here falls within the county's thousand foot buffer requirement for water. And the applicant has subdivided 20 acres from his farm to build a house. And part of the request is that he's trying to get financing from the secondary market and he wanted to subdivide that out. Because he's subdividing and the parent track falls within a thousand feet of the board and soil, he's required to connect. I believe from the distance where the county's water line is down to his home site, it's a couple of thousand feet. Um, it's just not economically feasible for him to, you know, run a water line because his property, according to him, he has no plans to develop the property, and that's the way staff looked at it. Because this property is not development driven, um, such as a similar case we had a couple months ago, uh, we're in support of his parents' request to put down or to utilize a private well and septic system. So with that, staff is recommending approval um, with no conditions. Ask a question. Sure. Uh, and you might not know this. What was the intent of the 1,000 feet? Is it the, is it 1,000 feet of length of pipe to run, or is it any part of the property has to be within 1,000 feet? Because, like you just said, 
his 20 acres here might be a thousand feet away from the road, but then he's going to have to cut across somebody else's property to make that happen, to be within his thousand feet, right? Not necessarily. He owns actually. Just show you. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he owns this property here as well as this property here. No, no, no. It's the person that you want. Oh, the person. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I apologize. And, and sort of right up high, all the way from the road, all the way down the side of the property line into that 20 acres is within 1,000 feet? No, no. This, this portion is within 1,000 feet. Well, but because he subdivided this from the parent, because this is all one parcel. Right. When he created that division, it triggered him to connect to the county's board because the parent fell within a thousand feet of the county's board system. Right. But I guess what I'm saying is what's the intent that with is that a thousand foot of pipe is a reasonable amount to ask a homeowner to run in order to connect to or or a developer or somebody to connect and longer than a thousand feet is, you know, you're getting into fairly substantial, expensive, prop, you know, piping to put down. Or, you know, or is it just simply a thousand foot radius? And and like you said, it, I mean, well, part of part it, of it, Mac. In years past, there had been cases where they would start at the furthest point from water and sewer. And they cut a piece, and they cut a piece, and right. they cut a piece, and they cut a piece, and they cut a piece, and we ended up with well accepted, well accepted, well accepted, well accepted, because everybody kept saying, well, but it's so expensive to get all this way down. Well, eventually, they ate the whole parent property, and the developer never had to plant it as a subdivision, never had to put in water, sewer, streets, anything else, because they just get off little bits and pieces there and help. So we try to catch it at the front end. <laughs> you know, so the parent we, is within, you know, we call the question. And in some cases, it's not a development. They, it's just their own piece of property. And that's why they have the option of the variance. Because you all can make that determination as well. The pie in the sky is that we want everybody to connect to the public system. But there are some cases we know that's not reasonable. Just, does a variance have the power to limit sub further subdivision of property? Yes, sir. Yes. Or if he were, were to come back and want to subdivide out another piece, he would have to come back. Right. Piece. So you, you, could, you could say you can do this, but you cannot further subdivide without connecting yes. all of these properties to. Well, to at this orders. point, you don't have all of these properties because you've just got the well, one parent trap. Or further properties to. Well, right. This okay. the board tries to look at it, or we have in the past. If it looks like it is not an attempt to circumvent, you know, then maybe we got room to, to help them out. But if we look at it and say, okay, what is the long term goal? What is the long term intent? If we think they're going to continue to bite this off then we either need to put the stipulation in, okay, we'll let you have this 20-acre track, but keep in mind, if you try to chisel out another 20, 30 acres here, there, and yonder, we're going to say, oh, wait a minute, it's time to ante up and do what's right. Okay. But yes, it can be handled with the commission. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. So, I'm done. All done, all done. <laughs> Do y'all have any other questions? Any questions or discussions at this time? Thank you. Is the applicant here would like to discuss something with us? Mr. Chairman, uh, board members, I'm Tim Jones. I'm with Citizens Community Bank. I'm actually here speaking on behalf of the owner who is also here, Dr. Michael Clark. And uh, without regurgitating anything that's already been said, I'd just like to say that the only reason that we're here today requesting this variance um, is that he is seeking the secondary market mortgage financing and 98% of companies that do secondary market mortgages will only do about 20 acres or under with the mortgage 
So he would not be cutting out and distracted land if that were not the case. Uh, he would just build on it and it would all be in one piece uh, and we wouldn't even have this issue. But uh, in order to place it in secondary market and him get the best financing available to him upon completion of construction, uh, he's having to cut out 20 acres, right at 20 acres, with the house and um, make application into the secondary market. And obviously this is recreational use. There will not be a baseball field or anything like that on this property. <laughs> Uh, so, promise. Okay, how, unless I missed it, how will he access that property? If you'll look on the um, land here, his home is right in the center of this. We've cut out a track that goes along this way, and we already have, he already owns property that goes out to Madison Highway, and that is actually his property address. When he cut this out there at Carmella, they called it is basically a crooked flag lot. Is the county okay with the crooked flag lot? We have worked the town <laughs> to accomplish that that look. Yes. Okay. Carmella, well, when he pays it off his mortgage, can he join his two pieces back together? Yes, he can. Yeah, I, I totally missed it. I tried to go out and look for it. I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's a big farm. Okay. Uh, question third. Can you speculate on your long-term intent for the balance of the, the property? Um, pretty much, we're just going to use it as as a, um, as a home homestead farm. That's all I'm going to do. We um, the balance of the acres, not just the twenty. Yes, sir. yes, sir. the entire thing. Uh, I'm going to plant a dove field. I'm going to have you know food plots and uh, probably some cows and things like that in the future. I just bought it. We don't want to do it yet, but that's the plan. Okay. There's no way I would. All right. Any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? Okay. We can put the condition on that if we can only do one. We can. If, if we make the variance for whole parent track. No, the variance will only be, be for the 28. 28, yeah. not for the parent track. Right. And we advertise, we put both in there just to cover both the 20 acres and the remnant. Right. Um, but okay, because if something changed and he had to sell the remainder, we wouldn't want to have this variance go with the remainder. We don't want it to do with this 20 acres. Okay. Any other questions, discussions? Uh, I understand you intend to live there long term, but should something happen and the property be sold, the variance goes with the piece of property, correct? Okay. Yes. But the variance would only be on the 20 acres if the board specified the 20 acres, which would leave the balance of the property still subject to tying in because the parent track is still within 1,000 feet of water. Right. Okay. All right. Actually, if I may, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, once this division is platted and recorded, this portion of property no longer falls within the county's thousand feet because it's going to be a separately recorded We're, track. Track. We're making right. three tracks. Whereas this will still fall within the county's thousand foot foot. So they can subdivide all day long down here. I mean, they have problems apparently because they don't have a road frontage. But only this would be subject to the connection requirement. Well, they can't subdivide unless, because they don't have road frontage. Right, they won't be able to subdivide this, you know, much further because, right, well, it doesn't have any road frontage. Well, well, yes, it does. Well, it does. It counts on Madison Highway. Well, but, it, but it's still within the powers of this board to specify that the variance is only for the 20 acres 
and that the additional acres that has now been cut into parcel three, so to speak, down at the bottom. It's going to take care of itself. Well, we can stipulate it's still considered part of parcel one. Portion here. We can still say that is considered part of parcel one for water sewer because that that's fixed to be a back door way for them to not necessarily him, you, but, but the guy that gets comes after you. Y'all think I am? <laughs> <laughs> but if somebody else buys, if the big parcel up front, up top is one. The small parcel he cut out is two, and then the other large parcel at the bottom is three. Mm -hmm. If at some point in the future, for some reason, they sell parcel three. And we're not really concerned. The county doesn't care about this. Mm -hmm. No. This is going to become a separately taxable piece of property. We're not concerned about that. We are concerned about this. Okay, if that's the county version of this, okay. We did discuss that here. All right. Any other questions, discussions from the board at this time? I have a question. Why is the driveway crazy? <laughs> I'll give you the short answer to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> In the beginning, the north part of the uh, land that the doctor owns was financed by Citizens Community Bank. That's our, our bank. The southern portion of the land they bought was financed by Heritage Bank in the south. When the land was when the land um, was out there and we were standing around saying, okay, the house is going to be here, it's going to be here. Anyway, the house started going up. It turns out the, the house was going up on land that I did not have a deed on. The bank that did the other financing owned the land that he was building on, so we had to do a land exchange. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Very complicated. It was very, very interesting. Yes. Opportunity. Obviously <laughs> stressful. <laughs> but anyway, we've, we've been working on it since the start of the project and um, been, been very aggressive in working with the county. Um, and they've kind of guided us along the way as to what we needed to do. So that's that's why we're going up and around that other land that's um, actually was funded by Harry's Bank and South. Uh, and then, Carmel, in that, uh, we call it one, two, and three. Um, number three is what, about 85, 90 acres? The bottom? Yeah. Uh, one-third. One-third. Any other questions or discussions? Is anyone here in opposition to this request or is anyone here that has questions about what is being requested? Was there any response to your office, Carmela? There was a call um, in support of, of the request. Okay. Any other questions, any other discussions before I try to call the question? I get a motion on this request. I should move that this motion be approved. Any stipulations? I have a motion from Dr. Housel to accept the request as presented, citing criteria D, yes. with no further conditions. Do I have a second? I have a second, Ms. Hobby. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck. Please take care of business. I will. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay. That concludes the Carmella Show. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Uh, so at that point, we have approval of minutes. I mm -hmm. read them and didn't see anything. You, you didn't know what? Sorry, a couple of small issues. Um, Deborah did email me a couple, couple of corrections, I, which I did forward on to y'all. And I noticed that I had a technical issue at the top of your minutes in the header on the second and third pages. I had left the February date by accident, so I changed it to the March date. Okay. So, so those are the only changes. Anybody else have any other corrections? And we get a motion to accept with the correction. I have a motion from Mr. Paul to accept. Second. Who is the second? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Report on the second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Any other business we need to talk about? One more thing. Laverne is up for reappointment. I ask that she submit her application. The, the deadline is the end of this month, either the 28th, 29th, somewhere around there. I can't remember the exact day. But as Mr. Strickland requested, I did draw up a letter in support of the firm's um, reappointment. If the board would like this letter to go forward, I just need a motion, second, that approves the letter, approves his signature on the letter. Anybody have a problem or can I get a motion? So moved. Dr. Howell has made a motion to accept the letter. Any second? Second, Ms. Holly. All in favor? Unanimous. And I've got a copy for you to sign. What, what if Laverne doesn't apply? Then this letter is a moot point. Okay. Uh, the only other business that I want to remind is anybody going to go next Tuesday besides me? I've got, Good. I've got three folks from the city. I don't know about county, but I've got. I've got Mr. Strickland, I've got Nancy, and I've got Sakrina, at least from the city's perspective. Um, Gretchen and that house is going to be in attendance. Okay, next Tuesday, we'll all be here with bells on. <laughs> Any other business we need to talk about? New business, old business? Thank you all. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We stand adjourned. Several, several years ago, we had several cases where they would take and they go slam the car and they start the right. And I understand that, but you know, we had the previous case of Albert Ward, and I was just trying to get down to this. You know, you have a piece of property that technically you're in the radius of a thousand feet, but you might have to cut across somebody's property to get there. Is it the intent that it's that or 